Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be alive and it's great to be here. <laughs> and it's wonderful to see all of you this morning. Um, for the benefit of the visitors here, my name is Barbara and I'm one of the leaders for Junior Church. Today, I'd like us to explore part of our second reading, which will be from Acts chapter 1 but I will be focusing on verse 8. Before Jesus' ascension, he promises his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit as they bear witness about Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to all the corners of the earth. What does Jesus want them to do? What are Jesus' disciples going to do with the news that Jesus is alive? Jesus wants them to tell others about him. That he is alive. That he is the savior of the world. So how will they do this? Jesus says they needed two things. They needed power. God was going to give them his Holy Spirit to help them tell people about Jesus. But that wasn't all they needed. They also needed a plan to do this. Jesus told them to start telling people about him in Jerusalem and then once they've done that, to move out to Judea and Samaria. And then to keep moving on to next places until the ends of the earth have heard the good news about him. So what comes to your mind when you think of something powerful? So the Holy Spirit that um, God promised them is supposed to be powerful to allow them to do um, what he asks. Now let's talk about a few powerful things. I'm sure if the children were here, and we do have some here, but I'm sure they would say an engine is powerful. It lifts and carries planes through the sky. The wind is powerful. It turns windmills and sometimes causes large waves to form in the ocean. A horse is powerful. It can run for long distances and pull heavy loads. Electricity is powerful. It lights our homes and towns. The engine of the train is powerful. It pulls a long line of carriages and carries lots of people and cargo. Many of the powerful things that come to mind are also noisy. But, the Bible, um, but in the Bible, we read about a quiet kind of power. Jesus wanted his disciples to know that after he left, God would send the Holy Spirit to be with them. The Holy Spirit is God's spirit and lives within us when we accept God's love. The Holy Spirit comforts us when we are feeling sad. It teaches us right from wrong, and it helps us know God's love. The Holy Spirit gives us confidence. It is the quiet power that lives within each and every one of us. We all need the power of the Holy Spirit to tell others about Jesus, no matter where we go in this world. I think many of us, including myself, are afraid to tell others about Jesus simply because we have not asked the Holy Spirit to fill us with his power to do this. We are afraid to be different. We are afraid to talk about Jesus Christ because maybe we cannot physically see him and maybe it does not seem cool to bear witness about the love of Jesus Christ. God wants 
to use you and me to share the good news of his son, Jesus Christ, to everyone. On our own, we are weak and unable to do so. But in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can. Through the Holy Spirit, God gives us boldness to proclaim the gospel. God gives us a desire to praise him. God gives us a willingness to obey him. The Lord wants us to strive to receive more of the Spirit. So how does that happen? It is not mechanical, because it is God who fills us, and we cannot command him to do so. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is by grace and not our doing. Yet, there are various things that we can do. We can live in obedience to God. When we live unholy lives, we wrong the Holy Spirit, and we will not experience its power in our lives. We can focus on Jesus by praying, by reading our Bible every day. There is a very tight bond between Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The more we draw closer to Jesus Christ, the more the Holy Spirit will fill us. We can proclaim the gospel. When we read that people were filled of the Holy Spirit, often they were busy preaching or getting ready to preach. We must remember, God does not give his spirit for us to enjoy privately, but to serve him publicly. So let's heed to the call. Amen.